In this lecture, we will be examining a group of Chinese royal dynasties known collectively as the Han dynasties, H-A-N. Historians often break up the Han period into two components. The former Han dynasty, sometimes called the Western Han, reigned over China from approximately 208 BCE to 8 CE. The later Han dynasty, which is sometimes called the Eastern Han Dynasty reigned over China from uh, 25 CE to approximately 220 CE. The uh, Eastern and Western names sometimes used refer simply to the geographical regions that were the centers of power for each dynasty. The former Han Dynasty is a period noted for a shift in philosophy from a legalistic focus to Confucian focus. The Han Dynasty extended Chinese territory into modern-day Korea, Siberia, and Vietnam, as you can see on the map that accompanies this slide. Much of the territorial growth occurred during the reign of Emperor Han Wudi, W-U-D-I, who we'll get to in just a few slides. But during this time period, um, the arts and literature and architecture uh, flourished. Uh, the development of what is known as the Silk Road is also a feature of this dynasty. We'll explore the importance of the Silk Road in the next slide. The Silk Road was a complex network of land and sea routes. It's important to note, as you can tell from the map, that there was not a single road, but this was a wide range of travel routes. This uh, term, Silk Road, is a modern expression, and people who lived during the time did not necessarily use this term. The Silk Road helped link China with the Greek and Roman empires, um, as well as the numerous kingdoms and empires of Central, Southern, and Western Asia. Culture and technology also spread along with trade on the Silk Road, making this much more than a commercial network. This map shows the uh, wide variety of land and sea routes that we today uh, lump together under the umbrella term Silk Road. One of the most influential and longest reigning monarchs in Chinese history was uh, Emperor Han Wudi. He reigned from uh, 141 to 87 BCE, about 54 years on the throne. In terms of territorial growth, the empire uh, nearly doubled in size during Han's reign. In addition, Han's armies successfully subdued the empire's most significant external threat, the nomadic warring people known as the Xiongnu, that's X-I-O-N-G-N-U, uh, people of Central Asia. Um, Han's dynastic name is uh, now associated with the modern-day Han people, an ethnic group that comprises approximately 95% of the population of modern China. Um, Han is noted for streamlining government under Confucian principles. He implemented the doctrines of Confucianism as the state philosophy and the state code of ethics for the empire. He also created an institute to instruct future civil servants about the major Confucian texts, and the ways of Confucianism. This emphasis on Confucianism, um, coupled with Han's lengthy reign, uh, meant that his reign left a lasting imprint on the culture and politics of China and East Asia that can be discerned even today. Han created national monopolies for commodities like salt and iron with the goal and the outcome of increasing state revenue. The first census of China was developed under the reign of Han Wudi. Yet Han, we should note, is also known to history as a, a rather superstitious, an extremely extravagant, and even cruel ruler. Um, toward the end of his reign, uh, many witchcraft ac accusations and trials occurred um, due to Han's strange dreams and hallucinations. Uh, thousands of his subjects were executed near the end of his life at a time when Han became increasingly paranoid and suspicious even of his close associates. The rule 
of Wang Mang is sometimes referred to as the Jin, X-I-N dynasty, the word Jin meaning new. This was a approximately 14-year interruption of the Han dynasties. Uh, the historical legacy of Wang Mang is somewhat varied. Uh, some historians, both current and ancient, have portrayed Wang Mang as a false claimant to the imperial throne, while other scholars have viewed him as a somewhat far-sighted and altruistic or beneficent reformer. Wang's path to power was somewhat complex. He was appointed as regent to an underage emperor, and that emperor died at a very young age. There are some stories that suggest Wang may have been involved in poisoning the young emperor. Um, Wang had already married his daughter to the young emperor, and he used this connection between his daughter and the deceased young emperor to claim the throne in 9 CE. To promote his claim, Wang engaged in a propaganda campaign, arguing that the Han dynasty had ruled far too long, and that heaven was granting him the mandate to create a new dynasty. If you think back to our early discussions of the mandate of heaven, the belief um, that uh, the heavens will take away the right of rulers to rule, if they believe them to be unjust or corrupt. On several occasions during his, during his reign, the Huanghe River, or the Yellow River, changed its course. This uh, disaster led to famine and displaced populations and even epidemics, eventually culminating in civil war. The war began with um, groups of migrating peasants who left um, destroyed lands in, in search initially for new lands upon which to grow crops, and survive. One of these rebel groups, which was known as the Red Eyebrows Faction, due to the face paint they used both to terrify opponents and to identify each other in battle, uh, this Red Eyebrows group became powerful enough to defeat Wang Mang's military forces, and he was eventually killed by rebel troops in one of his own palaces. A very short reign, and uh, for some historians, uh, more of a momentary blip in a continuous um, Han dynasty. Others, again, use this as a midpoint to separate the former and later Han. The later Han dynasty, sometimes again known as the Eastern Han, um, after the temporary disruption by Wang Mang, the Han dynasty reemerged after a brief period of consolidation. The Han dynasty was restored by Emperor Guangwu, G-U-A-N-G, W U through the use of military subjugation and conquest of local warlords, the entirety of Han China was reunited and pacified uh, by his death in 57 CE. However, Guangwu uh, typically first tried peaceful approaches instead of war in his efforts to regain control of rebellious regions. His reign is is noted in part for being one of relative tolerance and mercy toward former enemies who put down their weapons. Of course, those who refused to uh, put down weapons faced war. Among the noteworthy policies of the later Han dynasty was the introduction of land reforms, including the privatization of land. This was in part a reaction to a land redistribution scheme put in place by Wang Mang that broke up land holdings of wealthy aristocrats and gave land away to the poor. This had less to do um, with Wang Mang being, you know, progressive or anything as, as much as it was just a way to uh, disrupt people he believed to be his enemies, uh, wealthy landholders. Um, during this time period, in the later Han or Eastern Han period, the abolition, abolition rather, of uh, slavery was introduced in China, though for many poor rural peasants being free and tied to the land was really not that much different than being a slave. The later Han dynasty is also noted for the emergence of a philosophical tradition that we today refer to as Neo-Daoism. Uh, during the period of the later Han Dynasty, a new philosophical tradition emerged, again, that we call Neo-Daoism. The Chinese referred to this philosophical belief system as Zhuan Shui, which you can see spelled up there, X-U-A-N-X-U-E, uh, which translates roughly as mysterious learning. Um, in part, we can view this as a reaction against traditional Confucianism, 
Though in practice, Neo-Taoism is something of a blending of Taoist and Confucian beliefs. Neo-Taoists were much more interested in immortality and the afterlife than were Confucianists, who again had that uh, social harmony focus, very interested in um, uh, human matters. This may have also been a reaction against what was seen as a corrupt and powerful government in the last century of the later Han Dynasty. In general, Neo-Taoists were focused on the arts. They were focused on something called pure conversation and meditation. Those following this so-called uh, pure conversation tradition put an emphasis on poetry and clever humor. They like to get together in small groups and uh, come up with uh, uh, witty discussions and uh, insightful, provocative um, conversations with each other. Um, these Neo-Daoist scholars um, were searching, I think, for more simple, more comforting, and really apolitical or non-political pursuits in a time of increasing civil strife and a time of extreme distrust of the government. Um, so they were focused on uh, self-improvement, but uh, sort of removing themselves from what they see they saw as a corrupt system. Uh, the Neo-Daoists also influenced the emergence of Zen Buddhism, which we will explore in a later lecture when we discuss Japanese civilizations. Finally, uh, in terms of technology, um, there were a number of significant technological innovations in the Han period. Han technological advances um, included innovations, for example, in, in steel making. Han inventors developed pioneering blast furnaces that uh, removed impurities from wrought iron. Um, Han era steel was among the best in the world at the time. In the Han era, sophisticated seismometers were developed that could detect the direction of earthquakes up to 200 miles away. There's a picture of one of these seismometers in the accompanying photograph here. This device used a metal pendulum that was inverted and would react to these distant tremors. Um, the, the pendulum would then um, activate a series of gears which would drop a ball into one of the mouths. If you can see, those are like uh, dragons or serpents one of the mouths of those devices, and that would tell uh, the person where the, the earthquake was centered, depending on where it came out at. Um, in the field of mathematics, Han scholars were noted for innovations in advanced arithmetic, including such uh, innovations as basic algebra, the development of interest rate formulas, for those of you who are into math, fractions, square roots, and uh, a much improved value of pi. Um, Han inventors developed a form of an armillary sphere. Um, this device was something like a celestial globe that you may have seen, which is uh, like an Earth with uh, the planets and stars surrounding it in, in their various orbits. Um, but unlike celestial globes, this device, this armillary sphere, could make predictions about astronomical phenomenon, um, such as the locations of planets and stars. Um, innovative calendars were developed by scholars during the Han period. These calendars were even more advanced than the best Roman calendars of the time. Um, in terms of medicine, uh, Han research developed advanced anesthetic substances for use during surgery. Um, having just gone through some surgery myself, I can appreciate the benefit of uh, anesthesia. Um, and they recognized that certain diseases were caused by nutritional deficiencies in substances found in particular foods. Um, Han um, technologists also developed new mining techniques, especially in developing um, mine shafts that would go much lower into the ground and uh, made use of uh, piping and um, delivering natural gas as a source of energy. And this brings to a conclusion our brief look at uh, the Han dynasties.